Hello everyone, I'm Tequila Sunset. Here we are again, back early in the morning, another cup of coffee, ready for our third and final DLC speculation video about the Thrones of Decay. We already covered the Empire and the uh, and Nurgle as well in our previous two videos, and now looks like the dwarves are drawing the short straw here as they going last, but certainly not least. Uh, we're going to take a look at the, the roster. We are again going at the um, same template, or understanding as that CA will be going through the same template. With uh, one legendary lord, one legendary hero, one generic lord, one generic hero, and then about five or six units with a f uh, three regiments of renown, I think. Uh, we're going to do our best to fill out, because to be honest, if I'm looking at the dwarf roster, they have had a couple DLCs, and it's, for the most part, they kind of have all they've got. Um, so I don't think there are, like, too many things that they are, like, drastically in need of that they don't already have, so... But we will do what we can, and again, same thing as with the last couple of videos, if anybody might have some, uh, maybe some of y'all know something I don't, or maybe you have some interesting ideas uh, about how to implement some of the things that I talk about here, uh, feel free to share them in the comments, we can get a discussion going. Uh, so, starting off with the Legendary Lord, I really do think it's going to be Grim Barlickson. Okay, so Grim Barlickson, as it says here, youngest dwarf to pass the many rituals, required to be a named a master engineer. He is a legendary and dwarven engineer, so his big thing... Is that he has a uh, uh, like this thing called a grudge raker, right? You can see it right here. It's this big old double uh, double barreled uh, rifle here. It's pretty awesome, and uh, yeah, it's got two weapons, two barrels. This weapon can riddle a single target or blast a swath into oncoming troops. I like to think of this one as like if he equal, could have like uh, multiple, um, I guess, ammo types or something like that. I think that would actually be really interesting. Um, you could have uh, like uh, like almost like a toggle. Where one of them is like a basically like a normal shotgun, like almost standard buckshot that's meant to kill like multiple to, for like crowd clearing and stuff like that. And then the single target one is like he um like solid slugs basically where he hits them. I'm thinking like yeah like the the uh, what's it called the solid slug could have like a shield breaker or something like that or some kind of contact effect that I think would make it interesting. But basically single target supposed to be for like anti large. And the uh, buckshot supposed to be for anti-infantry. That could be pretty cool. He also has this cog axe. So it's like whether by steel, steam powered clamp or teeth located along its blade, the cog axe can catch and break a foe's weapon. So for this one, I think um, it should be like an. I'm, th I'm imagining it as like an active ability where uh, he it gives him like a contact effect on his attacks. Where if he hits something. Then, um, like, say something big, uh, like, tries to collapse onto him just to kill him in melee. So if it hits something, if he hits something, he, like, does, like, a really big debuff to, like, their weapon strength and their, uh, melee attack or something like that. Just something to worsen their, uh, um, their uh, combat stats, their damage output, just as, like, a way of, like, defense by offense, so to speak. So uh, something like that could be interesting. Um, maybe even if you want it to be, like, since it's a clamp, you could also, like, try a, a pl uh, apply a slow, so that way, like, for example, his range units and his army can now turn and, like, shoot at it more effectively to try to peel them off. Um, so something like that can have some pretty cool synergies with uh, all the range DPS that's on the dwarf roster. Otherwise, yeah, that could be pretty cool. Um, otherwise, I expect them... I would like them to give... Because they already have, like, the four, just like a regular campaign mechanic. Something like a, like a much more unique sort of, um, like a, a construct mechanic or something like that. Way more reminiscent of um, Ikid Claw's uh, Workshop. Because Ikid Claw's Workshop is one of the most... Like, Ikid Claw's campaign, one of the most fun campaigns in the game, really. Like, when that DLC came out, everybody was talking about how, like, Tanwin drew the real short end of the stick. Because uh, Ikid Claw's campaign was so much better. So, like, something like that I think could be really um, interesting and give, like, the dwarves a bunch of fun variations to a lot of their, uh, like, war machines and stuff like that, like gyrocopters, or, like, to their artillery and their guns and stuff like that. So that could be really cool. Um, yeah, otherwise, yeah, he would be, like, like he'd have this rifle and basically be, like, okay in melee, because he is, in, in the end of the day, an engineer uh, lord. So, not so great in melee, but um, good from range, and versatile from range is the thing, but, like, his multiple... Um, like, different types of um, ammunition that he can use. Something like that. Yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. Um, and I think he just makes more sense as a legendary lord. Um, now, on the flip side, because we have two characters, really. There's Malachi McKyson. Basically, he's this cool guy. Looks pretty awesome. Uh, basically, he's like a Slayer Engineer dude. Now, he honestly seems like... And then you have Joseph Buckman, of course. So, Joseph Buckman, basically the brewmaster himself, and also, like, basically the, uh, the CEO of Dwarven Rangers, basically. Uh, the big shot. So, the the two of them are themselves, like, really interesting lore-wise. The thing is, Malachi Mikeson, because he's, like, he's not just a slayer, 
He's also like a disgraced engineer. That's why he has the sla- took the Slayer Oath, right? So I can't imagine him actually leading an army. Like, I don't think it makes sense for him to lead an army, you know? So to me, that's why it makes sense for him to be the legendary hero for the dwarves. And yeah, like Joseph Bugman, because in the um, um, that blog post they made when they were talking about, hey, this is what our template's going to be like. And they were talking about their, um, their update for the Shadows of Change DLC. They said that for Thrones of Decay, the FLC is going to be a legendary lord. I think that's going to be Joseph Bugman. Joseph Bugman, he's a big character in the lore. He's really, really cool, really unique. Um, as like a, to my knowledge, he's the only like major like ranger uh, character. Like there's a couple other ones who are named as like they have um, red like Ulthar's Raiders. What's his name? Ulthar's Raiders. But I don't think Ulthar himself is nearly as big as like Joseph Bugman. So yeah, he's a pretty big character. So I think having him as like your legend FLC legendary lord would be pretty cool, especially because like for like part of the reason why you have FLCs to begin with is to sort of maintain a broad like um incentive or interest for people in the game even if they don't buy the dlc right so that way they still get something in this case they get uh, a cool character that's a real big name in the lore right so yeah having him there would be pretty cool um basically because he might actually be worthwhile as like um like a semi uh horde character in the way that uh what's it called like the vampire coast have what they like they have the ship building mechanic and, but they can also settle, like, locations. I think having Joseph Bugman, um, something like that would, would be pretty cool. Because ever since a bunch of goblins basically destroyed his brewery, see, destruction of the brewery, he basically just started wandering on a quest for vengeance. And him and, like, some followers as well. So you can sort of have his quest for vengeance to basically just kill the shit out of as many green skins as he can. Can could sort of be have a campaign built around that in some capacity. And then he himself, like, has um, almost like a wandering caravan, wandering brewery sort of deal. That can basically function as his horde, so he can have a caravan um, building mechanic instead of a ship building mechanic. But he can also still set up like almost like like outposts and things like that, where you can, you know, like almost like brewery outposts, or something like that, I guess. Um, so stuff like that could be uh, made for a pretty fun campaign where you stay mobile, you get freedom to move around all over, particularly the old world. Um, like if you want to head to the wastelands in the south, you can to try to fight uh, greenskins there. You want to head like e um um like east or whatever try to fight like i don't know chaos dwarves or stuff like that you can do that and vampire counts undead all that stuff or you can go north try to fight uh like norskins and whatnot stuff like that norskins and just chaos in general so stuff like that it would give him like freedom to pursue uh what he wants or like fuck it if you want you can go all the way to like lustry or something like that just or like to the uh southern provinces or whatever fight it claw or something um or the southern like um southern realms excuse me not southern provinces um, yeah, any stuff like that. So yeah, that could be pretty awesome. Uh, I think, um, as for, cause like here's his, uh, like his war gear or whatever. So he does have his rune axe. Basically it bears a rune of cleaving and a rune of fury. That's sort of the main element to it. So it could be some like active, um, just like an active ability that beefs up his damage output or something like that temporarily. It's just something like that. You can actually keep it simple with him. He seems like he's like basically a hybrid. Cause if you know Bugman's Rangers named after the, uh, the man himself, they're basically like a hybrid infantry unit. They have really good me- good melee ta- um, melee stats, especially defensive ones, and also charge defense. Um, and even uh, their like leadership is really good for a range unit. And of course, they have their crossbows, right? So something like he would basically be something of that template where he himself has good but not amazing combat stats, but still really is still good for like a range character. But his primary weapon is still his crossbow. Right, because here he comes in and he does have a chainmail shirt and like a helmet and stuff like that. So he'd probably have more armor than your typical uh, ranger. So instead of 40, you can give him like 75 or something like that, 75, 80. Because he's definitely not as heavily armored as like guys like, like the other door, like the combat lords. But um, still, you know, like basically a more armored uh, ranger. So he'd be pretty tanky for a ranger. Um, decent combat stats, but his de- main DPS would be in his crossbow. And you can just have him be like a really good sniper, basically. Sniping single entities. Um... So yeah, that would be like his profile on in combat. I would, okay, there might be, because here's the problem here. So Bugman's tankard, right? A family treasure, any of who, any who quaff from the tankard are engulfed in remembrances of the glorious past. It is said that as long as it is held by a Bugman, a Bugman, the tankard never empties. After a long haul upon its contents, the drinker feels refreshed and restored. Okay, so my fear is that they'll turn this into like an AoE healing item. I really hope they don't do that. He, uh, like, they, um, Bugman's Rangers already have his liquid fortification, so I'm assuming that he would have that. So it's basically just standard healing on his own. 
But in my opinion, for this, like, if they were going to turn this into, like, a specific item, maybe, like, a uh, Vigor Replenishment or something like that would be more appropriate. Vigor Replenishment and maybe, like, Immune to Psychology or something. Like, basically, like, Rune of Hearth and Home. Like, something um, reminiscent of Rune of Hearth and Home. So it's like, you have this, but you don't need a Rune character to, um, to bring it. So something like that, I think, would be uh, better than... Um, just like healing or whatever. As I've said elsewhere, I just think healing is way too ubiquitous in like the current uh, state of the game. So I feel like just getting a bit more creative with like other effects would be a lot more interesting than just let's slap another heal onto this uh, new character, you know? So yeah, stuff like that. Um, otherwise, you could even give him like an ale wagon or something like that, that uh, as a mount. So like he can fire from the mount and the ale wagon itself could have like some... Um, AoE buffs, almost like a, um, I guess like a slower version of the, where, at the Empire, a slower version of like Volkmar's like, uh, War Altar. So it's basically just like a big mount for him to have, uh, have it be pretty armored so that way he's not just like super easy to snipe. Um, but yeah, and you can give him like AoE buffs similar, uh, similar to like what the, uh, uh, Electric Arch Electors and the, uh, War Priests like Volkmar have. Um, you can give him something like that that's tied to his, uh, bug. Like, he basically distributes ale, different types of ale from the wagon to his army, and, like, around him, and it gives him certain buffs. Like, I don't know, you can have one that's, like, I don't know, you can have one called the spicy stuff or whatever. I can't think of a name off the top of my head. But, like, have it, like, imbue, like, fire and magic damage into the, um, for your army or something like that. And, like, a bit of a damage buff. Almost like an AoE, like, um, uh, let's get, uh. What is it? Flaming Sword of Ruin, I think it is. Yeah, basically just like an AoE Flaming Sword of Ruin uh, sort of effect like that. Um, you can also have another one, um, just like some other effects like that, that provide something interesting. Um, also like something that like just, I guess is meant to give him like a sense of urgency or whatever. That like uh, increases like a uh, reload skill and things of that nature. Uh, reload skill, melee attack, whatever. Just different like buffs, ways to implement buffs that uh, would be useful for them. So he can be like a support character and also like a bit of a sniper for single entities. Um, I think something like that would make him uh, very, very interesting. Um, so yeah, there's uh, Joseph Bugman uh, in a nutshell, I guess. Or like what I think they can do with Joseph Bugman. Uh, as for Malachi Mikeson, so his big thing is like he's got these two pistols here. Although it's also mentioned elsewhere that he uses like a repeater rifle. So to me, I think it would be really cool if you gave him like different weapons that you can choose from. Right, like almost like um, like basically how the way that they imply mounts, but instead have it for like different weapon types. So one of them can be dual like Drake fire pistols, which is what these look like. Okay, so dual Drake fire pistols basically it's just like fire damage, armor piercing damage that are more meant to be used against infantry. Like you can do like three shots per volley or whatever. Because I'm pretty sure Drake fire pistols. I'm pretty sure they're in Vermintide and it's like a revolver that has three shots. So basically just two of those that could be really awesome. And then you can have. Where was the mention of his rifle? Because I'm pretty sure it's in here somewhere. Okay. Rifle, rifle, rifle. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. And a repeating dwarf handgun, which I'm pretty sure is like the rifle, like as we see here. So something like that, especially if they make it like a lever action rifle, because I just think lever action rifles are so odd. Like anybody's played like Red Dead or something like that, uh, or just like seen a Western. Lever act, give him a lever action rifle. That would be really sick. Um, but basically just, yeah, exactly what it sounds like, a repeating rifle. So basically that one's more for like shooting at single entities with a decent armor piercing values and a good fire rate. So that way, yeah, just a lot of DPS from range. And since he is a slayer, like hybrid, um, uh, a slayer and engineer, you would make him like actually pretty good in combat as well. Um, so yeah, and he's armed with a great weapon, so it can be like a great axe. So basically have him be like in combat, have him be like a baby version of uh, Ungrim. Not quite as good because he is a legend, uh, like a hybrid. So like basically the same like template as a slayer, a single entity slayer, but just not as good as a uh, combatant as Ungrim. But still like pretty solid uh, as a hybrid. So yeah, stuff like that could be pretty cool. And you can give him like multiple types of like two different types of guns that he can choose from, gun uh, like gun loadouts that he can choose from. Or you can even have it be a toggle, maybe, as it like switches out in between them. Something like that would be really, really cool. And um, yeah, you can also even play around with like different ammo types because he's supposed to be like sort of like the mad scientist kind of guy. He I, like, which is part of why got him into trouble, which is why he had the Slayer Oath in general already. But um, you can play with different ammo types. I can give him like, like I don't know, like phosphorific ammunition, right? Like um, that, like uh, like explodes or whatever, like explodes in fire, exploding fire ammunition. Um, and this could be something he applies, like, to his lord's army. 
basically. Like you can select different types. Like you can have one where like a one skill in a skill tree where like if you give it, it gives like Thunderers like explosive fire ammunition. And then others which provide some kind of buffs to like your artillery, others provide buffs to your um your uh like your crossbows or something like that. Anything of that nature, you really you really can play around with him and get a ton of like awesome effects for his army and for himself. Um, especially since he is basically like the mad scientist guy. So you can uh, have a lot of fun with him. So, and with him, um, do I want to go into the units? Here, I'll get, I'll get back to him because he's the one who creates a lot of like the uh, Thunder Barge and the Goblin Hewer, which we will get to in a second. But otherwise, I do think for your, when we start to get to our generic single entities, right? Generic uh, Lord and a generic hero. Um, I do think either like a Dragon Slayer or a Doom Seeker, just some kind of Slayer, uh, like... Slayer hero probably, because I really don't imagine a slayer, with the exception of Ungrim. Like, Ungrim's supposed to be unique in his regard. Like, the Slayer King, like, it, that's a unique thing with him, right? Um, so I think that with him, uh, like, he should be the only, like, Slayer Lord. And then one of the one of your uh, generic heroes is either one of a Dragon Slayer or, like, a Doom Seeker. Doom Seekers are the dudes, as you can see, who have, like, chains. They're basically like Kratos. I don't know, Dwarf Kratos, all right? Um, so something like that. That could be pretty cool. You can even tech them to be like armor piercing, like anti infantry guys, if you want to, because like with the chains, I guess, or whatever. Or you can just keep them anti large in um, the um, in the character with the uh, other slayers, like the regular slayer units. That would be pretty cool. Um, or just a dragon slayer, have it just be give him a great axe, give him a two handed axe, and make him a slayer char uh, character who's basically their role is just to like basically kill single kill any big large stuff. Uh, dwarves do struggle with like large single entity mass generally speaking like stuff like uh, Jabber Slythe is a bane of their existence It's very rough for them to deal with so um, Having like a single entity character that can sort of like at least put some hits into it try to get some hits into it uh, Could be really nice really cool and also just like thematically just really cool like a slayer um, Like a dragon slayer or something like that. It's just a name dragon slayer sounds awesome so yeah, um, yeah, one of those can be the Lord as a hero honestly, I think because like you've got just Grim Burlokson or whatever um, I don't know of like tabletop any hero lords that they're actually missing. So the best thing I can think of is just like a an engineer lord, basically. Um, has similar elements to him as like the engineer hero. Uh they should get mounts, actually. I think I wanted to say this. I do think it'd be pretty awesome if like engineers got like a gyrocopter mount or something like that. That'd be pretty sick. I do hope hopefully they put in something like that, because that'd be awesome. Um it would make engineers a lot more interesting than just, you know, dude with rifle, you know? Uh, the generic engineers, I mean, at least, at least like guys like Malkai, Mikeson, and um, Grim Burlakson have some uh, flavor to them. But otherwise, okay, so now I want to talk about, I guess, the uh, the golem and the Elo golem in the room, shard dragon in the room, what do you want to, whatever you want to call it. Um, so the flavor, like there are dwarves like in like Lord of the Rings or whatever who like ride on rams or whatever. Um, but in Warhammer, the dwar Warhammer Fantasy, the dwarves do not ride mounts. Um, they don't ride animals. They don't do anything like that. Um, so, like, generally speaking, they don't have mass. They're not supposed to be, a fa at least their character or whatever, th thematically, they've been things that don't have mass. The closest thing would be, like, Thoric on it, or Rune Lords on their, uh, the uh, Anvil of Doom, or uh, Thorgrim as well with his, uh, like, his throne bearers. But, like, those are exceptions, and they're not necessarily the same thing as, like, a monster. So, to me, I honestly don't think they should get Rune Golems and Shard Dragons. I just don't think it's, like, would be, um... I think it would compromise just the character of the roster itself. I don't think they need them in order to be good. I don't think they need them to be fun. Um, like, whenever I'm playing their campaign, like, they're one of my favorite campaigns, like, our rosters to play in campaign. Like, they got, like, flamethrowers. They got helicopters that fire, like, rockets. They got, or whatever the brimstone guns count as. Uh, they've got guns. They've got cannons. They got all this cool shit. I don't think you need, like, a dragon. If I want, if I want dragons, if I want a big monster, I'll play, like, high elves or something. Um, and even if you want dwarves with monsters, you can play as Chaos Dwarves. Like, for these guys, I think it just makes them more unique, and it makes them stand out where they don't get stuff like Rune Golems, which I'm pretty sure Rune Golems, by the way, in the time period that the, uh, Warhammer, Total War Warhammer set in, I'm pretty sure Rune Golems hadn't been a thing for, like, ages. Um, actually, wait, hold on a second. The last one able to command them was Ranald Silverthumb, the Rune Lord of Kaz Karaz e uh, Ikrak. And even he needed the aid of other rulers to fully awaken. The act of attempting to animate the slumbering golems and use them in the war alone turned them into stone. So it's like, I don't know, dude. I don't, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't think they're needed. If they, I honestly, I think they will bring at least one of these, if not both into the game. Because CA does really love their like big monsters and monstrous stuff. 
So yeah, Rune Golems would probably be like a Monster's Infantry one, because to my knowledge, they're not like necessarily big enough to be a single entity. They'll probably be a Monster's Infantry, at least that's how I imagine them as. Um, think like um, like Crypt Horrors or Shopti, but like bigger and like tankier and more robust. Um, probably like Crypt Horrors if they were like a stone construct. How about that? That's what I would think of, uh, uh, think of them as. Um, yeah, Shard Dragon, it's basically like a dragon that doesn't have wings, that can't fly. Um, it would have, like, if we're looking from here, like, Razor Scales, Shard Dragon's covered in thick, sharp scales, which inflict harm upon all those who try to harm it. That's a damage reflect ability. It's got damage reflect written all over it, like what Shield of Thorn does. And, um, Rabbit Frenzy, when the Shard Dragon is attacked, it goes into Murderous Frenzy. I'm assuming this would just be, like, some kind of rampage, uh, passive, like, maybe... When it goes below 50% HP, it starts to rampage for like, I don't know, 60 seconds, 30 seconds or something like that. And it gets like a damage spike when it does that. So yeah, that can be um, something like that. Um, yeah, something like that. Again, I don't I don't think that would be um, good for the roster, but um, they would be fun. Like, I know a lot of people in like campaign especially would have fun with them. And uh, see, it likes bringing, likes those big fun monsters. They're very flashy. They uh, help sell DLCs. So... Yeah, they're probably going to be bringing this in, even though I personally don't think that would be a good choice. Like, and as far as big monsters go, because now we're talking about the Goblin Hewer, where is it? Yeah, the Goblin Hewer and the Thunder Barge. I think you can at least make an exception for these because they are like uh, war machines, as opposed to like a more monstrous entity, particularly with a Shark Dragon. Rune Golems, at least you have a better argument for because they are a construct. They're like engineered, at least. Shark Dragons are just, are just a beast. But yeah, um... If they did bring the Shard Dragon in the game, can um, maybe they can have it be just like a single regiment of renown, like that uh, Carnosaur that um, Thor can get in his campaign, like something like that. I would prefer as opposed to making them like a regular unit. But yeah, anyway, Thunder Barge is the other one. That was an invention of what's his face, uh, Malachi McKyson, and um, yeah, see, Spirit of Growing Me created by the Slayer Engineer Malachi Mike Mikeson 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 I think. So yeah, this one just could be really cool. Okay, I hope what they do is because, like, if you can see it in the picture here, at least as... Okay, that doesn't zoom in at all. Uh, very helpful. Um, they have cannons along the side, not on the front. And there's one on the front, but there's most of, most of its armament is on the side. I really hope they make it in the game somehow so that when you do shoot with it, you have to shoot it. Like, you turn on... You don't shoot from the front. You get, like, a full broadsides. Because if there's anything that's cool in, like, war games, it's broadsides, okay? Like, that just sounds awesome. So, maybe see, like, set, like, eight cannons or something like that, depending on how big they want to make the model. Um, like, six or eight cannons, just firing all at once would just be so sick. That would just be awesome. So, yeah, hopefully, if they do bring it in, they bring something like that. Um, for the sake of multi... When we're talking about multiplayer, honest to God, I don't think they can make something like this balanced for multiplayer while still keeping it, like as fun and, and like awesome as a thunder barge should be so what i hope they do is they make it absolutely cracked like just insane damage output but they make it like just incredibly expensive to the point where there's just there's no point like make it just like fuck it just have it cost where are you gas dwarves gas dwarves yeah just made just make it wait where's the i could have okay supply trains 1000 i could have sworn there wasn't there like an old thing wasn't there some kind of campaign exclusive thing that uh Whatever, have it cost like 6,000 gold and be amazingly powerful. There you go. That uh, solves the uh, the issue. Um, so yeah. Yeah, because in my opinion, I don't think you could really balance this thing well. Not in a way that would uh, keep it fun. Um, so either way, you're, if you just put, if you try to make it balance for multiplayer, I don't think it would be fun. So just make it just insanely powerful, but also insanely expensive to the point where no one takes it. Um, so yeah, there you go. Campaign's happy. Multiplayer's still fine. Um, but yeah, uh, it's... Basically, it would be kind of like the uh, Sky Junk, where it can't like land or do any really anything really in combat. Just give it insane damage potential, like with cannon fire and stuff like that. Also, have like a crew on the on the on the deck. You can have a crew of like Thunderers, like firing off at like anything in the air. Like that's your anti-air stuff. So yeah, that could just be a really really cool unit. This on its own could be just like a the centerpiece for a DLC. Don't need a Star Dragon for that. So yeah, just just saying. Um, so yeah, this could be awesome. Also, could be a mount for Malachi and Mikeson. I think that could be pretty cool. If you like, at least in campaign or something like that. And again, in multiplayer, make it just insanely expensive. Don't have to worry about the balance if you just make it too expensive. And just keep it as like a campaign fun thing. So now going on to, um, yeah, the Go Goblin Hewer also is another one. It's basically, as far as I can tell, like, it's kind of like the Skullcracker. Um... Yeah, it seems like, um, or actually, it doesn't look sturdy enough to, like, be, like, an actual tank. So, it seems more like a missile piece, almost like, um, 
Uh, where are you? Corn, 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 corn. It's almost like uh, the uh, Skull Cannon, but basically like have it like be more rapid fire and like more DPS overall, but not really something you put into melee. Um, cause yeah, it doesn't, cause like, just look at that frame. Like that's not, that doesn't seem like something I want in melee. Um, that seems very, very fragile. So yeah, I think that would be, um, that could be pretty cool as like a, as a, like a war machine, like a ranged war machine, like almost like a skirmishing war machine. That could be pretty cool. Like anti-infantry for uh, that. So as for other units, so those are honestly more like flashy, like, like stuff like a big monsters thing, uh, giant giant monster. Giant war machine, uh, smaller but also kind of like wacky war machine with the goblin hewer. So for something that's more grounded, and since we're getting Joseph Bugman in here, I do think that would be cool if they brought in like another range unit. Again, to my knowledge, all of the range units that really exist in like the the army book and stuff like that, they're kind of all in the game already. Like here you have the great weapons ones, and here you have just the basic ones with like hand axe, sword axe and shield, and then just crossbow, and then. Uh, great axe uh, and also um, throwing axes so you kind of have all your bases covered there but i do think it'd be cool if they brought in like a melee focused um ranger that uh, doesn't have a crossbow but instead has just like it's like axe and board but has like a uh, way better uh combat sets since it is a uh, melee dedicated ranger and it would be more offensive than like a dwarf warriors or something like that your usual dwarf unit so basically something like um you can give them like th like 36 almost like um you can give them like 34 and like 32 melee attack and defense or something like that if you want them to be relatively cheaper, like same cost as like like 525 to 650, somewhere between then. Or you can make it like a melee version of Bugman's Rangers where you give them actually like really good combat stats to compensate for the lack of a ranged, uh, uh, ranged uh, weapon. So something like that could be cool, I think. Like you make it like basic cost 800 gold, uh, 40 armor, bronze shield, 75 uh, leadership, 33 speed, but instead have it be like, I don't know, 44 melee attack and like 42 melee defense or something like that uh, with uh, good weapon strength and so yeah something like that could be uh, really really cool I think um, it also just lets you like be more flexible in terms of if you want to do like an all ranger army or something like that for like Joseph Bugman I think that could be pretty sick um, especially because for Joseph Bugman because like rangers they're also really good at like ambushes and stuff like that so on the campaign like in campaign I would expect them to get like um like bonus like bonuses to his ambush success chance and whatnot um maybe even give him like the master ambusher stance like what um uh the widows get and like oxyodal so something like that uh you can just if you have a melee variant of a ranger that just gives you even more flexibility when you're trying to like get those ambushes set up so something like that i think would be pretty cool um just another ranger unit not necessarily something flashy like a big monster or whatever but if you just give him like a straightforward like a specific use case type of uh regular unit i think those can be a, a really long way and the other one I can at least think of, so we're on Iron Drakes now. Some of you might be wondering, it's like, wait, they already have Iron Drakes in the game. Look, those are their pictures for their flamethrower and the uh, Trollhammer Torpedo. But if any of you have played Vermintide, you'll know that there also exists Drake Fire Pistols. So basically, they are like shorter range pistol variants of the Drake gun. So they fire like fire ammunition. Um, and in Vermintide, at least from what I remember, they're basically like um, three barrel, three cylinder revolvers. So what I'm thinking is you can have Iron Drakes with Drake Fire Pistols that have like dual drake fire pistols and they basically just shoot the shit out of like infantry and stuff like that with their flaming armor piercing damage um because right now the regular iron drakes are flamethrowers those are designed for clearing out large amounts of lightly armored infantry like chaff like that's like just like the ultimate tra chaff clearer while troll hammer torpedoes are teched into shooting like big large single entities chariots monstrous infantry stuff like that but this one can be teched into shooting and basically at armored infantry like that's its job just to like be an armored infantry clearer Something like that could actually be, first of all, really cool because, like, dual pistols that shoot fire, armor piercing fire ammunition. Uh, they're also revolvers, too, so that's pretty sick. So, yeah, and it also, like, has an actual specific use case that can be pretty helpful in the case of, like, just taking our armored infantry. So, yeah, I think that would be pretty sick. And um, so, yeah, put that in there, and that would be really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, and that's kind of all I've got, at least, as far as, because, again, like, like I said, as far as their standard units, like, they kind of have them all. Like, they have Dwarf Warriors, the Dwarf Warrior, very great weapons, long beards, they got all this stuff. They got their hammers, they've got their uh, their iron, uh, iron Breakers. Yeah, uh, to my knowledge, yeah, they're not really missing anything. So, like, I think we're good. So, otherwise, other stuff I will comment on. Okay, they previously, when remember, like, if you remember, with Ethereal units, they changed it so that they have, instead of, like, I think it was 75%, 
um, physical resistance. They changed it to 55% res physical resistance, but also increased their HP to like sort of compensate it to try to balance. So with the dwarf and characters, they forgot they forgot to do the 55% physical resistance uh, change. So they had 75% for a long time. But the thing is, they changed it to 55%, but they forgot to adjust their HP. So they still have these baby dick HP pools while now only having 55% physical resistance. So they're actually like really squishy. So in my opinion, I would like for them to just, as part of the balance patch that usually comes with the DLC, it would very much appreciate if they got the uh, appropriate HP buff, so that way they can be in line with all the other ethereal units. Additionally, what are some other um, some other buffs I think that they could use? Um, otherwise, most of the roster is actually fine. Um, the Dwarven roster is like in a pretty good spot right now as far as balance goes, as far as their general units are concerned. My main thing is... Um, Main thing they need is uh their lords. Okay, so Thoric used to be too like uh like like way too strong, like S tier overtuned. Now the main reason for that was because first of all, he's a really good support character. Rune of Hearth and Home Home is amazing. Basically guarantees perfect vigor for like your hero hammer or whatever that's around him. Anvil of Doom is really, really strong. He's incredibly tanky, 120 armor. On his anvil, he's got 25% physical resistance plus 15% missile resistance because his character and 40% spell resistance. And he's got 90 leadership. Like, this guy is just insanely hard to kill, right? And on top of that, he does have his, of course, rune magic for support. He can do uh, rune of wrath and rune for some damage. Slowness to help support your um, your snipes with your range. Uh, he's got, what's the other one? Rune of speed to beef up uh, flanks like melee damage output. All this stuff. On top of that, he has rune of doom, which... Originally was a map-wide uh, AoE, so plus 24 melee attack and cause fear in a map-wide AoE for 16 seconds. This got nerfed down to 55 meters. In my opinion, this was actually a, uh, a bad move. Because uh, all it does is it uh, kind of incentivizes the dwarf player to just box. Which, and I've talked about this with Grand Cathay, but boxes are just... Again, I don't think in a vacuum, I'm not, I don't think you're like evil or, or like a bad person or whatever. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with boxing if that's what you want to do. But when it becomes something that you are incentivized towards, it starts becoming like overly common and that turns the meta into something tedious when it should be fun, right? So in my opinion, you, they should give him back his, his map-wide AoE with the melee attack. But instead, because the main problem with him is that he, because he also has like good combat stats and ma especially majority armor piercing, right? Really good armor piercing values. Like he's got better armor piercing ratio than Th uh, Thorgrim Grudge, Grudge Bearer, the fucking High King himself. So because of that, not only was he a really a great support character, he was not only was he a great, um, just incredibly durable, but he was also a really, really good combatant for what he is. And that was the problem with him. So in my opinion... Um, instead of making him a worse support character with the rune, nerfing Rune of Doom and in the process making him also a more tedious character because now you're just incentivizing boxing builds. Um, instead, they should have just nerfed his uh, damage output. Like bring this down to like 360 and like or bring us down more in the territory of like a Rune a rune Lord. Like they're at 340, bring him down to like make him like 360 with like majority base damage. Like give him or you can even give him like 120 armor piercing weapon strength with 240 base damage. That's fine. Um, I think that's fine because he's also incredibly durable and incredibly good at supporting um, as a support character. So I think he's perfectly fine if he's really good at two of those, but not if he's really good at three of those. So I think that would be a way better change that would make him way more fun. Make him and the dwarves way better. Um, additionally, like the other ones, the stuff that really needs changing is their combat characters. Like Belagar's okay. Um, his main thing though is that he doesn't die and he's cheap and he doesn't die because he's tanky. Silver shields, good combat sets. In my opinion, I would I would change some stuff like um, Revenge Incarnate. Maybe have it give it like Armor Sundering or something like that, so it can actually do damage. You can reduce the melee tech buff. You can make it like twenty four, and also give imbue Armor Sundering. So yeah, something like that could be in, more interesting. So he's at least better and a bit better in combat, or just also give him. Um... Okay, you could actually give him a summon. Like if you get let him summon like this guy, uh, not this guy, um. King Lun Ironhammer. This is one of the ancestor uh, ancestors he starts with in his campaign. Let him summon this guy and just have him be like bare bones, just like this. This let this let this guy be a summon. That can be his Krell. In my opinion, if you do that, then Belagar actually becomes unique and interesting and worth taking because now you can summon like a terror causing uh, single entity that can also do some damage. Okay, so something like that I actually thinks interesting and useful. So yeah, give him uh, if you give him a summon, and I don't think it would be too busted because in the end of the day, it's still like a foot character. 
so it has uh, low age, low amount of agency. It's just it is strong. Right? I think that would be strong because now you can summon like a terror and ethereal causing terror unit that has decent combat stats. But it's um, a temporary because it's a summon, and also since him and Belgar are both going to be foot characters, melee foot characters, they're not going to have as much agency. So I don't think it would be too strong for like multiplayer, but it would just give them more like make them more interesting, give them more flavor. Because there is in the dwarf the uh, the 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 forge or whatever, there is an item that lets you summon. It's like horn of the ancestor gods or whatever that lets you summon an ethereal uh, thane. So basically, just give him that and have the ethereal thane just be named King Loon, just be King Loon Iron Hammer. There you go. I think that would make uh, Beligar uh, way more interesting, and you would see him taken way more often. Ungrim, Iron Fist. His issue is like, okay, Red Ruin um, is kind of... Because of the minus 20 melee 24 melee defense, it makes him die really fast. I don't know. At the very least, at his base, he should have a higher weapon strength, in my opinion. Like, Grum Brindle's at 500, which is good. Um, I think he should be at, like, 480. At least 480. Give him like just 20 armor pierce, 20 uh, to his base and armor piercing damage, and yeah, that's fine. That would at least be fine. Um, especially because like he's supposed to be like a like the slayer. He's supposed to be like an incredible damage dealer. So yeah, I think he should at least have 480 weapon strength. You could justify giving him like 500, even that plus including his bonus versus large. So yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, yeah, otherwise like I get like Axe of Dargo is supposed to be a damage spike, which is fine. And Red Ruin. But again, I think also this stuff... The problem is, even if you give him these huge damage spikes, he's only 32 speed. Any large thing that he wants to kill, practically any large thing that he wants to kill, is just going to like point, just select it, and click in the direction away from Thor, uh, Ungrim, and it's fine. And all that weapon strength just gets wasted. So you can even, like, I've heard um, a couple other people say this. I think I heard, like, Human Boy, yes, yes, also say this. Um... Give him, like, a really, like, upgraded Foe Seeker. Like, something unique. Or, fuck it, just imbue Foe Seeker into Red Ruin. So that way, except have it be more. Instead of 25% speed, have it be, like, 50% speed. Um, yeah, 50% speed. And, like, maybe even give him just temporary perfect vigor while it's active. Something like that could be interesting. So that way he's at least better able to get onto the stuff he wants to heal. So that way you don't just waste all that weapon strength you're giving him. Because he does have a lot of weapon strength uh, spike, uh, spikes. Damage spikes. Like this, the Axe of Dargo, 50%, 75% to base and armor piercing, 50% to armor piercing. That's a fat damage spike. He's even got, he's even got Deadly Onslaught as well. Um, although I'm not, honestly, I think this one you can maybe replace with... Um, uh, where are you? Where are you? You could replace it with Heroic Killing Blow. That can that can be better for him. Because um, like he's a dwarf. You're not relying on a charge. Or whatever. Um, it, Deadly Onslaught's fine. But really, like, make him better able to actually get to the target because that's the key issue that all these like melee only uh fo foot characters have is just they have no agency they can't get on what the shit they're trying to kill um so yeah uh something that can help them do that i think would make them a lot better what else what else what else oh yeah grom brindle the white dwarf um this reduces cost fuck it why not if unger can be 1250 uh reduces cost to make him like 1200 or not 1,200, um, like 1,400. Boom, there you go. Yeah, make them, like, yeah, 14, make them 1,400 base. Like, so 200 less, you just reduce that? Yeah, i take that. Or at least it's better. So it's, like, um, something you can do. That, oh, also, Grombrilla has no fear needs to be better. Um, I either make this, uh, just, um, um, Make this map white again, and if it's going to stay to one single use, it should be stronger than what it is. Uh, plus 20 for melee defense and unbreakable. In my opinion, give it, have it also imbued like perfect vigor or something like that um, for the duration of its uh, thing. Or like a vigor replenishment. Something to that effect, if you're going to keep it single use. In my opinion, it should be map wide no matter what. Um, almost honestly, for similar reasons that uh, Thorax thing should be map wide. Um, but yeah, have it be map wide. If you're gonna have it be single use, it needs to be stronger. So apply some other effect, like also maybe also boost their melee attack, plus 24 melee attack in addition to the melee defense, or imbue perfect vigor. If it's gonna be single use, if it's not gonna be single, if they can take off the single use and just have it be just cast it however you want on cooldown, it's a, it does have a cooldown, 120 seconds. So just yeah, one of those two things: either get rid of the the uh, restriction on the number of uses, or make it um, add like perfect vigor or something like that. And no matter what, uh, increase the radius to map wide. So yeah, and this is like built into him. So yeah, I think if you do that, then he'll start being better. Um, 
Yeah, that can definitely make him better. So Thorgrim, grudge bearer. Um, he is very. You are very expensive. You were expensive too, especially once you start taking actual stuff. In my opinion, change Oath of Vengeance to also reduce armor. Um, like minus twenty four melee defense and minus thirty armor would make this a good debuff. In my opinion, um, yeah, especially since it's only single target. So yeah, that could be nice because that could also support like a quarreler backline or something of that nature. Um. Of course, support, or also that there's like a big armor thing in the back line and you've got slayers on it that can support them as well. So that would be good. Um, the High King is a solid uh, buff. So is Great Book of Grudges. In my opinion, the thing with him, make him better because again, he has, I mean, he's not a foot carry. He's not a foot lord, but he has foot lord problems in the sense that he is only 30 speed. So he has trouble dictating his engagement, engagements. One thing that he doesn't have trouble with is getting into the front line engagement. So in my opinion, if you just make him like exceptionally good at crowd clearing, like killing infantry, then I think you can make him actually like more, much more viable. Um, so yeah, I would, okay, honestly, you can increase his weapon strength like to anywhere from 500 to up to like 600. And I think that'd be fine. Um, yeah, you can improve his splat, his like collision attacks and his uh, splash power, splash attack power. Maybe even give him a bonus versus infantry, so he has just has more melee attack, or just keep it as is because he does have still good combat stats. Just his issue is like he can't really get two key targets, but he can get two infantry, like a front line, so that way he can just clear that shit out. So in my opinion, yeah, just tech him into like a crowd clearer because all these other guys like Ungrum's anti large, Grom Brindle is just like a general a generalist, although he mostly want dueling stuff. Um, yeah, you mostly want him doing stuff. Thoric is a, is a uh, um, support character. Is a support character. And Belagar is the tank. And Thorgrim, have him be your fucking, your bulldozer. All right? Have him just, like, clear out infantry. So, yeah, there you go. That would, in my opinion, would make him better. Honestly, he could reduce his cost by 100. I think he'd be fine. Um, but at the very least, just make him better at crowd clearing. Turn him into just an infantry blender, and I think you've got a stew going. Otherwise, um, I think these guys are fine. Maybe the engineer, master engineer, could use a cost reduction. Because right now, like, because if people try to take him, like, fire ring authority, this is actually kind of expensive, especially with the flash bomb. Like, this is a big, this gets a bit expensive. So that's why you don't see him super often. You only see him kind of often. Runesmiths are, like, okay. I don't know. They're a bit expensive. Sometimes you see them these days, especially because, like, I'm noticing, especially in some matchups, like, against Grand Cafe, like, because of, uh, Seiteng the Watcher, aka uh, Saint Seiteng the Single Entity Eraser. Uh, sometimes people people will just take like a Dwarf Lord, like just completely bare bones because he's cheaper, and then maybe like a Runesmith and then a Thane or something like that. So, but he's not super common, so like you can even justify it. Honestly, if you reduce it like cost by like 50, you could, uh, that could uh, mean something. This is actually a good uh, deep buff, 40 melee attack, 50 second duration. Not bad. Otherwise, yeah. Um, yeah, otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much everything for the Dwarf roster. I think I went over, so yeah, all the stuff, basically. Grim Burlakson, your Legendary Lord. Joseph Bugman, your FLC Legendary Lord. Malachi McKyson as your Legendary Hero. Uh, maybe like a Doomseeker or a Dragon Slayer as your Hero. And Engineer Lord as well as your Generic Lord. Um, maybe like Rune Gar Golems or Dark Shard Dragons, some combination of that. I think they will, even though I don't think they should be in. I think they will be added, because CA does like their monsters. Um, Thunder Barge, I think, is definitely going to get in the game. Uh, Goblin Hewer probably will get in the game as well. And, um, in my opinion, some basic stuff like a Dwarf or a Melee Dwarf Ranger unit and, uh, Iron Drake's, you know, we've got them dual, uh, revolvers going, Drake, uh, Drake Fire revolvers going. Those would be pretty cool. Uh, hopefully you guys found that interesting. That does round out our DLC speculation videos. Um, from what I hear, from everything I hear, it's supposed to come out in April. Uh, generally speaking, that honestly does sound kind of optimistic to me since, at least historic in recent history, these last couple of years since uh, the game came out. See, it has been pretty kind of slow with putting out content. How, um, like, like honestly, this deal, this game is kind of their cash cow, especially after like hyenas and stuff. Like, it's the only thing keeping the lights on in the in uh, what is it, Horsham that they're in. Um, so I'm surprised. Like in two years, they've only put out three DLCs. Like three DLCs, and like, okay, I'm no businessman, so. Don't fucking take what I say with, like, a bunch of grains of salt. Um, an entire dwarf hold full of salt. 
But I would think that three DLCs, it would be what your target for a single year as opposed to two years. So I don't know. But then again, maybe they are really like, because they have been stepping up the pace at which they make like hot fixes and balance, balance uh, patches and stuff like that, which is a good sign. That is great. And so, yeah, maybe they're also doing that with just their content in general that they're putting out. So I wouldn't be surprised if it comes out in April. So maybe we'll be seeing a trailer or something like that soon. Hopefully you guys found this video interesting. If you did find that interesting, interesting, please consider leaving a like and subbing to the channel. It's definitely greatly appreciated. And uh, feel free to let me know what you guys think about my suggestions. If you guys have any of your own, what sort of, maybe there's some uh, lore stuff, uh, units or characters that I missed that you think are in uh, important. And otherwise, I will see you guys later.